Um, hello. Um, on session about Entity Browser module, which is uh, a new thing in Drupal 8. Uh, my name is Janez. I come from Slovenia. Um, and uh, I am an engineer and team lead at MD Systems. It's a company based in Zurich, Switzerland. Um, I've been an active member of the Drupal community since 2009. Um, I'm one of the leads of media initiative for Drupal 8, which we kind of started a bit more than two years ago in New York. Um, and I've been working on examiner.com for three years until this spring, um, which is a media company. Um, I don't know if name rings a bell, but examiner.com was Probably the first enterprise website on Drupal 7, they launched on Alpha, um, and it used to be the biggest website um, built on Drupal on the internet. And since it's a huge media website, I had to deal with a lot of problems about handling media assets and things like that. And this was like my main motivation to get involved into the initiative. Um, about my current employer, um, MD Systems, it's the biggest company contributor to Drupal. Um, it's a small web shop from Zurich. Um, we have uh, one of the top five Drupal 8 contributors. His name is Sasha Grossenbacher slash Birdier. Um, and um, the company has been launching Drupal 8 websites for more than a year now. Um, launched quite some bigger media websites because um, together with our partners, we built a Drupal 8 media distribution called MP8, um, which is then used to, to launch all these websites. Um, MP8 has an interesting model behind it. It's open source, but it's developed in the, in the closed community. And in order to get into that community, you have to you have to comply with certain requirements, how much you contribute, and that you're really actively um, involved into this group, um, which is interesting, and which also allowed us to port a lot of contrib modules, which are now part of MP8, but are also on Drupal.org and community can benefit from. However, um, now there are discussions going on about publicly open sourcing it, so it might end up on Drupal.org soon. It's not my decision, it's politics. Um, I work remotely. Um, I am a huge advocate of remote work. Um, I, if you don't think remote work can, can succeed, I suggest you to read this book. Um, it's from a company called 37 Signals. They created Basecamp, and they are distributed all around the world. And uh, they have a lot of interesting ideas about remote work and work in general. Um, this is not the only book that they published. They have a few more, and all of them are great. So I strongly suggest that. Um, I like to go to nice places. I like to travel. I also like to travel to places that are not so nice, because then um, we see how, how blessed we are with what we have. At home, I have three girls. Um, sometimes I do silly things. Sometimes I do silly things with my friends, and uh, I tend to think about problems that I cannot solve way too much, but I cannot help myself. Um, and I'm always happy to help, especially if you are struggling with stuff that we built in as part of the media initiative. Um, feel free to ping me. Um, if there is something I can do, I will. So contents of this session, uh, I will try to explain what Entity Browser is, what the idea behind the Entity Browser is, what's the architecture, because it's kind of a bit complex, and I realize that a lot of people struggle to understand it. Um, it will be actu actually the first talk where I will, I will explain this publicly outside of issue queues and commenting in the issue queues and things like that. So I really hope that this will help clarify the architecture. Um, I will try to show where you can use it, um, which kind of use cases you can cover with it, um, which modules 
entity browser integrates with, um, and um, a little bit of a roadmap, like where we are, where we're going, and stuff like that. So, have you ever wanted to upload multiple images at once? I guess you all did. And um, I hope this is, can you see this? It's big enough. So here we're using Entity Browser to drag and drop a few images into it, upload them, and then select them, and then Entity Browser propagates them down to the image field. So we can do that. Uh, then have you ever wanted to select images from a media library? I guess so, because this is one of the most requested features that we get when we ask people, what do you want from media? And again, we are creating a piece of content here. We have a field that stores images, it's image field. Again, we have Entity Browser here. It's the same Entity Browser as the one before, except now we switch to another so-called widget. We select a few images from, or one image from the from that view, and Entity Browser recognizes it's this image and propagates it back to a field, and then field is able to store a reference to it. Um, have you ever thought about combining both things in one step? What I mean with that? Like, um, have you ever wanted to, like, you want to select a few things from your library, and then you realize that something that you need for this concrete piece of content isn't in your library, so you want to, want to upload it, and you want to do everything in one step. And this is exactly what we are doing here. We're selecting a few things from the library, then we switch back to the uploader, we see stuff that we selected below, uh, we can remove, reorder that, do, like, still change our mind about those, then we can drag and drop a few more things to the uploader, um, upload that, it's being added to the list of currently selected stuff, we can reorder that, um, and then when we're done, we say you selected, and these entities will be propagated back to a field in the order that we defined. Um, have you tried to search for related content? It's a very similar use case, if you think about it, um, except that instead of searching a library of images, you want to search a library of content that exists on your web page. Um, it's a view. We have exposed filters. We search based on a title. We select two related, related nodes. Um, we can reorder them. And uh, we add some text and we have them referenced. Um, and have you ever thought about creating another piece of content in the context or context of your primary content? Uh, what I mean by that, like, you could select something from this view, but you also might want to create another node without leaving this original form. Um, and this is also something that we can support with Entity Browser. Um, and now we see node was created, was added to the list. We can reorder that, remove, or do whatever. And now we can also see that the body was correctly saved, um, as we would expect. So we've got you covered with all of these use cases. Uh, this is not some kind of imaginary mock-up thingy that we want to do. You can actually do this now, today. You can download Entity Browser and, in some cases, some other modules. And if you know how to configure this, you can get this experience now. I recorded those GIFs yesterday when I was on a train traveling here. So, um, so what is Entity Browser? It's a very general browsing, selecting, entity creating tool. Like, it, it has like this very abstract and architecture that doesn't want to do any assumptions. How do you want to find your entities? Um, it uses plugins, and then with correct plugins, you can create user experiences like that. Um, you can feed uh, many different parts of Drupal with Entity Browser. 
Obviously, you can feed entity reference fields, you can feed file fields, you can feed image fields, but you can also feed WYSIWYG to embed something into WYSIWYG. Um, and you can also feed your custom forms. You can add entity browser to a custom form. Um, it will open up for you, and then when it closes, it will save references to those entities that you selected into a form element of your desire, and then you can handle that on submit. Um, any questions here? Are you excited? Do you like it? <laughs> you didn't convince me. <laughs> um, so, a little bit about the architecture. Um, as I said, it's very pluggable. We have four types of plugins which allow you to in interact with, I think, every part of the flow. Um, and it uses core plugins. So if you are familiar with plugin system in Drupal 8 core, um, you should be able to understand how these plugins work pretty easily. Um, and in order to explain what, what which of those plugins do, um, I will use this mock, which was actually the mock that we created when we were planning this module. Um, and we, will, like, we had few of those mocks and we were trying to show what we want to achieve. Um, and general idea is you have some system where in Drupal where you need reference to some entities. And Entity Browser is a tool which you call when you need that. It pops up. Um, and then user can select entities inside of Entity Browser. And then Entity Browser sends back information about the entities that were selected. And you can continue doing with them whatever you want. This is like the very general idea what it does. Um, first plugin that we have, it's called Widget. Um, widget is that part where you select entities or create entities. Like selecting entities is the case where we had a view and you clicked on images or selected checkboxes. Or um, the drop zone JS uploader, which you saw, where we drag and dropped images. This is also a widget, but instead of listing existing entities on the site, it allows you to upload files, and then it knows how to save them and selects those current entities that were created on the fly. So widget is basically the meat of the entity browser. Like where most, this is where most of the interaction with the user happens. Um, and widget can be a lot of things. It can be a view. Um, that lists entities and allows you to select them. Um, it can be a file uploader. Uh, example of that would be a simple upload field, which is like pure HTML5, uh, or something nicer like Drops.js, which we saw earlier. Um, you could also create a, a widget that displays a form that allows you to search third-party provider, let's say YouTube. Um, you, you have a search field where you enter search query, and when you submit it, Widget can do a query to YouTube API, get results back, um, display them for you. You select which the videos that you want, and then Widget can create entities out of that, uh, and, and then you can play with them um, further. Um, then it also can be an, an entity form. It's that last use case that I showed where you create an entity in the context of your main content in that case. Um, so basically what we do there is we display entity form um, as any other else and like once it's saved, then entity browser propagates that created entity back. Um, and so on. Like here, it's just your imagination that can um, limit you. Uh, stuff that has a star next to it, it's already implemented. Um, and for example, rem remote resource browsers, 
uh, are not there, but like it's definitely something that I think will appear at some point. Um, are you able to see this? Um, so in order to implement a widget, you have to implement this widget interface that we provide. And basically, you have three functions. You have get form, where you return the form that defines how your widget looks. Um, then it's validate, where you validate the submit, and submit function, where you uh, basically can save entities or do whatever you want with them. And then if you are extending widget base class, you have a function there which is called select, select entities. Um, and you just pass array of entities that were selected to this function. And base class will do everything else for you. Uh, you could also do it manually, because current selection is stored in form state. So you could also do that um, without calling that function. But this function will also dispatch a Symfony event so other parts of, of Drupal could react on that selection. Any questions here? Um, then, next plugin that we have, it's called Widget Selector. Um, in general, you can have one widget on your entity browser or more of them. But only one can be displayed at a time. And you need a way to switch between those widgets. Um, and in this case, we have tabs, tabs on the top, but you can also have other things. Like, if you only have one widget and you don't want to display an anything that allows you to select this one widget, because this doesn't make any sense, you can use plugin that always displays the first one. Uh, then we can use drop-down, if you prefer that, over tabs. You can use buttons, um, you can use tabs, and again, you can implement your own stuff. Um, but, yeah, I think that we will see less innovation here. Um, maybe something that will try to be smart, which widget should be displayed depending in which state of the workflow we are. That might be, for example, like when you open the entity browser, you display the listing page, and then when you already selected something, maybe we automatically switch to uploader, because we assume that if you selected something from the library, maybe you want to upload something or not. So this might be something smarter. But it's pretty custom, so I assume that this will be more like custom project that will do that. And again, we have an interface that you need to implement to implement this plugin. Um, and we get you need to implement form, where you output the form that lets users select the currently active um, widget. Um, and then we have validate function and submit function that should return the ID of the widget that, is, that was selected on this step. Um, then we have selection display plugin, which is this thingy at the bottom that displays stuff that you selected by now. Uh, immediately, initially, when you open Entity Browser, it will be empty. But then, as you go and you select things, upload files, um, reorder things, entities that are currently selected will appear here at the bottom. Or it can be on the side or on the top, depending how, how you want it to look. But it's a special part where entities that are currently selected are displayed. Um, the most simple implementation of this plugin is that you don't display anything. This simply means that you don't allow any multi-step workflow where you can upload, and then you can select something, and then you can upload again, and reorder, and remove. Like this kind of workload is not possible. With this plugin, you immediately when you select something, it's propagated back. So if you upload something, it's propagated back. Uh, you cannot change your selection. Um, but then you know, you can, we can also display um, anything below. We can use a view to do that. Uh, you can build a view, and then those entities will be um, 
inject it into a view and view will be responsible for rendering, rendering them. Um, or we can use something as we used earlier, um, which basically renders an entity. Um, this is the example that we saw earlier where we saw these little images below. It's using this plugin. View and this rendered entity display are very similar. It's just the difference how you prefer to, to display um, your things. And then you can also just display your entities with labels. If they're not images, if they are nodes, it maybe makes more sense to just display titles. Again, if you want to implement this plugin, uh, you have selection display interface. You need to implement the form, which is basically listing the entities and some action that will let Entity Browser know that you are done, that you are happy with your selection. Then validate and submit. Again, in a submit case, on a, we have a function on a base class, which you can um, call to indicate that selection was done. For example, this happens when, on the case earlier, we, we pressed use, use selection. Um, but again, you can also implement this logic by yourself, because it all works with Symfony events again. So you can also dispatch Symfony event by yourself, if you would prefer to. Um, and then we have display plugins. And display plugins is simply defines how Entity Browser looks. You can display it as an iframe embedded into the parent form. You can display it as a model. Um, you can display it as a standalone page, which was more like experimental implementation, but there might be very edge case use cases to do that. Um, and again, you can implement your own displays, but I also assume that this will be needed only to cover very custom requirements. Um, and here we also have an interface, it's called display interface, and basically you need to implement two functions. One function is called the display entity browser, which will be called from the parent form to get, to, to get entity browser into it, and then selection completed, which will be um, responsible for propagating entities um, back to the parent form. Any questions here? Um, so, where can you use Entity Browser today? Um, you can use it with the Entity, with the entity Reference field. Um, this is the example that we saw earlier. Uh, we have a field widget for the Entity Reference. Um, when you click on this Select Entities, link, it will trigger Entity Browser to open, and then when you select um, entities in the Entity Browser, it will propagate the selection back and render the entities below um, using the configuration you needed. In this case, I configured it to you to display them only as with, with labels, but you can also um, configure them to be rendered, and you can display teasers here if you want, or you can create a custom view mode just for that, uh, or you can also implement your own plugin where you specific, specify different logic. For example, we have, for files, we have another plugin that just displays thumbnails, because files cannot be rendered. Um, and then it also allows you to edit the entity. Um, if you click on this button, you will get a modal with the entity form where you can edit it, save it. Um, and then um, we also have widgets for file and image fields. Uh, the main difference between entity reference and file, file fields is that file fields and image fields have additional parameters on them. Like you probably know that on files you can add descriptions, on images you can add alt and title texts. Um, so we also added like extended widgets that use Entity Browser to select files or images, um, but then also allow you to populate these additional metadata fields. Um, 
You can use it in Entity Embed. Entity Embed is another module, and I have a presentation about it tomorrow. Uh, it's used to embed entities into WYSIWYG. Um, and what we do here is we, we clicked on a button f to embed an entity. Um, on the first step, we got the entity browser that was listing images on the site. We selected an image from that, uh, from that view. And then we conf on the next step, we configured how we want this image to be displayed. Um, and then when we submitted that, it ended up in WYSIWYG. With the caption, you can also define how it's aligned. Um, and then it's displayed when you view the, that text. So here we are choosing how we want the image to be displayed. We're selecting image style. Um, we add alt text and title. Um, and I think that we will also add a caption. Yes. And now it's already rendered in the WYSIWYG, but it's actually not saved as an image. It's just a, a custom tag with metadata on it. So rendering is done when you try to view it. It's not saved. Or you can use it in a custom form. Um, it's, uh, for now, you need to do a little bit of code to achieve Enti to, to convince Entity Browser to appear in your form, uh, but it can be done. I've done it on custom projects. Um, my desire is to create a form element at some point, so you could only say hash type is Entity Browser, and then everything else is done automatically. Um, there is an issue for that. Um, there is a patch there, but it's not ready yet, and it's not the biggest priority right now, so I don't know when we will. Uh, manage to do that. Um, yeah. Any questions? Uh, if not, I wanted to do a demo, how to configure it. Um, and then, yeah. Uh, okay, whoops. Okay, I have a fresh install of Drupal. Um, I pre-created some things. Um, I have a content type with two fields. Um, one can store images, one can store nodes. Um, and I have a view. Which I will be using in my entity browser. Um, it's pretty standard view. Uh, the only special thing is that I had to add the entity browser bulk select form, which is basically that checkbox that you saw earlier. Um, and you need to have the entity browser display on a view. Um, so those are two conditions for a view to be able to be used in entity browser. But other than that, you can do whatever you want uh, with it. And then, next step is to actually create the entity browser. We have, like here in configuration, under content, content authoring, we have configuration page, where you, all the entity browsers on the system are listed. Um, and you can also create one. So we give it a name. We, dis we decide which display we want to use. Um, I will go with modal because it's the sexiest. Um, I, will, I will have only one widget, so I don't need widget selectors, and I select single widget. Um, and I won't be displaying any existing selection. I want my nodes immediately when I select them for the first time to be propagated. Um, and I can also change the value of the main submit button. Um, and then I can configure each of those plugins separately. For display, I can decide the size um, and how, how link is rendered. Let's change that. Um, 
Then widget selector and selection display are so basic that they don't have any configuration in these specific cases. And then here on this last page, we decide which widgets we want to use. And I want to use view widget. Um, and I give you the name. And since this is a view widget, I am able to select which view I want to use from this dropdown. Then when I submit that, uh, my entity browser is added to this list. Um, but I cannot use it right now. Uh, I need to go back to my content types configuration. Um, and I need to manage form display. This is basically def defining how my form will look like. And you can see that currently my entity reference field for nodes, it's using autocomplete widget, which you're most likely familiar with. It's like this autocomplete text field that suggests you what you might want to reference based on what you're typing into it. Um, and as I can see, there is another uh, widget here. It's called Entity Browser. And if I select that and try to configure it, um, I see that I can select the Entity Browser that I want to use with it. I only have one now, because the one that I just created. I can also define how I want my selected entities to look like. Um, I can select Label for now. Um, and I also can decide if I want to display edit and remove buttons. Let's assume that I don't want to edit. I only have want to uh, have remove button available there. Um, so now I did that. And if I return to the form, this widget looks differently. Um, when I click, nice. <laughs> um, Let's see if this appears again. No. OK. Fixed. Um, so if you remember, uh, when I was creating my entity browser, I configured how this trigger link or button should look, should look like. I specifically said that I wanted to say select related. Um, and when I click on it, I get modal with entity browser in it. Um, I can use exposed filters to search, select, and then my entity is propagated here. Um, and I can do this again, and this second entity will just be added. And I can reorder, or I can remove it. So this is how it works. Yeah. Um, then, second example would be uploading images and selecting images from the library. Um, for this use case, we already have a module that, that gives you basic configuration. So I will enable that module. It's called File Browser. Um, it basically creates, predefines a browser configuration. And I will also use file entity, because file entity module um, provides you this widget that in integrates, that is a bridge between the image field and the entity browser. Um, when I install that, I hope that it will not explode into my face. And you can see that it's also uploading drop zone, drop zone JS module, which is a module that provides this nice uploader thingy that you saw earlier. Um, and now, if I go back to the entity browser's configuration, I can see that instead of only one browser, which I created earlier, I have two more, which were automatically created by the file browser module. Um, and we can check the configuration. We can see that one of them is using modal. It's using tabs for um, 
for the widget selector. And it's using multi-step selection display, which is that part at the bottom that displays entities that are currently selected. Um, and then we go to the widgets part, we see that it has two widgets. Um, one is uploader that is using drop zone. It's this one. Um, and one is a view that is using listing view uh, that also came with file browser. Um, and that's it. And now we can go to the our content type configuration again to form display management page. Um, and again, I have this image field here that I created earlier, and currently it has it, it's using the default image widget um, that you usually get when you install plain Drupal, and it looks like this. It's a standard HTML upload. Uh, field. And I can switch that to the entity browser and story is pretty much the same. You can select which entity browser you want to use. Now we have three in, those, in this drop down. I will go with modal. Um, I will remove the edit button and I can also define how I want my file to be displayed in that table. Um, and now when I do that, if I reload this form, I get something more familiar. Uh, with select files here, which is triggered for entity browser, and an empty table at the moment, which is listing um, files that were, will be selected. And uh, game okay, styles. Uh, suck. Files, files permission issue, most likely. Yes. So I have these test files in my system, uh, and this view displays them. It's using masonry to make them look nice. I can select a few of them. I can add them to the current selection. They appear down here. And now I can go back to this page where I can upload stuff. I can upload two more images, add them, they appear here, I can reorder this, and then when I'm happy I say use selected and I, and I get them propagated here. And as we can see, uh, since the field is configured to require alternative text, uh, we get this and it's required. So if I don't fill that up, I won't be able to save it. Um, that's it. Yeah. Um, first question: Are there any questions about this? Any comments? Do you like it? You don't like it? You think it's? <laughs> Thank you. Can you? Uh, I will repeat it. Yes. You can add the uh, field in the form, like, uh, I don't know, tagging uh, for the image or something. Yeah. Yeah. By default, you cannot. Um, you can. There is. Th this is a feature request. We want to add this. This would. This would be responsibility of of a uh, of an entity browser widget of the uploader widget. Create the entity. And populate fields that were entered. Yeah. Um, but you can also solve this, like, and this works. The problem here is, imagine that you're uploading 10 images, and you have, you have credits field on, that, on those images. Now, if credit line for each of those 10 images is the same, then you can display one, one text field below the uploader and populate it, and then Drupal can automatically copy it to all 10 images. And that's pretty easy to solve. But the problem is, if each of those images should have different credit line, you cannot solve that that easily. You can either need like a multi-step, some kind of form where you can populate each image um, 
separately or something like that. Um, on a project that we were building an examiner, we were solving this with inline entity form, which is another thing that I wanted to show you right now, if we have more time. Yes, or have if there are more questions, maybe we can answer questions, and then if we have time, I can do another yeah. demo. Yes. When yes. No, they are. Every every file that is it uh, like it. Also, it depends how you can. The library that you saw is just a view, so it's really it depends how you configure your view. If you configure it to display everything that was uploaded, everything will appear appear there. If you want to limit that, you can add conditions to that view and you will have just a subset of all the files that were uploaded. You can even create a view with an argument to break it to the node so that you can, when you go to edit the node, you see Yeah, yeah, or the typical use case is also user library that has user as a contextual filter and it, select, and it takes currently logged in user and then you have so-called user library where you list all the files that this user uploaded. Um, yeah, so it's, and this is the case with, with tools like that. It allows you to do a lot of stuff, but you have to understand what you want to do. Um, so inline entity form. Oh, are there any other questions? I don't want to cut your questions time. Yeah. Contextual argument. Yeah. 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 So if you if you want to if you want to use a view as a selection display, you need to have a view that will ha get entity IDs as a contextual argument. Any other question? So inline entity form. Who heard about inline entity form? Um, it is a great stuff that came from commerce. Um, and at some point, we were like looking at it and said, this makes a lot of sense for media also, especially when you have this complex metadata on media items problems. Um, that's why we integrated with inline entity form. Um, so let's do that. Um, I will go and enable inline entity form. Um, blah, 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 blah. Let's do it like this. And I will also enable Entity Browser Inline Entity Form Integration Module, which is a module that comes with Entity Browser, but it's a sub-module in there, so you don't need to enable it by default. Um, and it provides integration with Inline Entity Form. And it provides two, two, two types of integrations. Uh, first type of integration is a widget that uses some things from the inline entity form to display that entity form in entity browser. You know that GIF where I created a node inside of entity browser and immediately referenced it? This is basically using inline entity form to do it. Um, and there is another even more interesting use case, integration case, um, which if you, if you are familiar with Inline entity form. Let's let's use it. Let's use inline entity form on this node reference thingy, um, and let's say that we want to allow users to add new nodes with inline entity form and to also add existing nodes. Um, and this is something that is familiar from Drupal 7 world already. Like now, when you go here, this is inline entity form. We can add an inline node. Um, and then when I save that, it appears in this table, and I can edit it, and I can remove it, and so forth. And it also allows you to add existing reference to an existing node or entity in general from here, which by default is a, a autocomplete thingy. 
Um, so you search for something, and it's being added. And then you can reorder this, and you can edit it. Um, you can edit the title or anything like that. Um, and it updates. And then when you save that, you have these entities referenced as you expect. Now, if you go back to the widget configuration, wrong field. Uh, yes. If you go back to widget configuration, to this inline entity form settings part, um, you see that you have another drop down here at the bottom. Um, and you can select an entity browser. And now, instead of the autocomplete field, you will have entity browser inside of inline entity form. Um, to see how this looks, we can go back to this form. And now we go into add existing node. And instead of autocomplete, we have something else. Um, we have this familiar select related trigger that opens entity browser. And now, if I select few entities, they are added into inline entity form. But since this is now inline entity form, I can go and edit them here. And I think that this might be one of the solutions to these complex metadata problems. Like you upload images, and if you're using entity in, uh, inline entity form, you can then add metadata to each, each image individually. Um, and at some point, I was also thinking, like, here at the bottom of this form, to add another button which says update node and open next one. And this would be nice for use case where you upload 10 images, and then you want to add credit, which is different to each one of them. And if you don't have to open each form individually, if the next form opens for you automatically, that might even improve the experience. Um, so yeah, um, there are a lot of possibilities, but we still need to explore how we will be using these possibilities to, to deliver the best experience for content creators. Um, so roadmap. Currently, we're all in alpha 5 or 4, something like that. Um, we still have a few things that we want to do until beta. Um, we would like to handle cardinality, which mean, basically means if parent form tells entity browser, hey, I need five entities, then entity browser shouldn't send six entities back. Currently, this can happen, uh, because there is no communication going on about that. Um, then constraints, like if a reference field accept no, uh, expects nodes, then it should be able to tell entity browser, hey, I expect nodes to be sent to me, and please don't send me taxonomy terms. Um, currently, this could happen if you misconfigure entity browser. So if you, if you create an entity browser that lists terms, and you use this entity browser with the entity reference field, then you're pretty much screwed. But like, if you understand what you're doing, if you understand that if you want nodes, you have to create the view that lists nodes, then you're fine. Like, it's just trying to be a little bit more smarter and to prevent you from doing stupid things. Um, and another thing that we want to do is editing existing selection. Like, for example, you, you already selected something into Entity Reference, and if you open Entity Browser again, um, stuff that is already selected won't appear in Entity Browser for you to be able to reorder it and play with it. So it would be nice if you could send an existing selection to the entity browser, and then you can play with that further in there. And for all those three things, we have patches that are not ready. We're working on that. Um, and when those three things are solved, I think we will be ready for beta. Um, and other things like user experience, theming, sometimes you see that it's a little bit like wiggly. Um, on the project where we worked, we were able, like, we were adding configuration to Entity Browser that 
allowed us to create great user experience for our use case, but it's probably not, a, it's not, we're not able to create great experience for every use case yet, so this is something we want to work on. You can do a lot if you dedicate some energy to play with it, to think how to improve things. And yeah, this being smart for you is another thing that we want to do, like to prevent you from doing stupid things. Um, but in general, all these things are, are more feature additions than something that will really break backward compatibility. Um, there's, like, I doubt that with these features that we're planning, if you create an entity browser now and start using it on, on a live site and you configure it in a way that it works for you, um, I don't think that we will do anything that will break your entity browser and like, prevent it from working. Um, so you can start playing with it. Just understand that every time when you update it, you need to test it thoroughly. And that's more or less it. Uh, there are entity browsers used on production websites already. So um, in worst case scenario, you will have to configure another entity browser from scratch. And as you've seen before, it's not a huge task to do so. Um, and thank you. Those slides, these slides, are online on this URL. I will also tweet them. Um, you can find me on IRC uh, slash RSM. Um, this is my blog where you also have contact form if you want to get in touch with me or the same username slash RSM on Twitter if you prefer that. Um, and thank you to sponsors. This event wouldn't be possible without them. And thank you. Do you have any other questions? Yes. Can you repeat the question? Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh, yeah. So nesting. Nesting. So the question is, it's it's possible to do nesting of entity browsers in inline entity form, or there is also use case with paragraphs. Paragraphs for something similar. Um, and yeah, in general, yes, you can nest them. Um, we had few bugs in the past that exploded in your face in some cases, and we fixed most of them, I think. There might be more bugs, but yeah, in general it's possible. And if it's, if it's not working for you, then it's definitely a bug that you need to report and we need to fix it. Um, and in general, problem is only like in a way how to detect which entity browser was triggered, which just means that we need to make sure that their IDs or reference to this entity browser are unique enough so each usage of the entity browser will have unique identifier. Um, that was m problem most of the times. But yeah, yeah, it should work. Um, let's, let's do a selfie. Wait, it's a big room. Say hi. Great. Thank you.